great cold open, guys. I know, right? I mean, you saying that was the cold open, so... <laughs> the viewers didn't actually hear the conversation, they just heard you say, great cold open. <laughs> so there's literally as, as minimal context as I could possibly fit in. Welcome back. Don't Let's worry, K4. there's another three hours of silence. Yeah, of Bro? course. Uh, great cold open was used to elaborate. Yeah, he used to elaborate. Great cold open was used. Oh, boy. If I had a door, well, I'd go to do the it. thing. Do the thing. Do what thing? You know, the episode thing. You know? How did you post Cairo's character in map chat? I posted it in the wrong chat. <laughs> Bro, Cairo's in map. <laughs> Bro, oh god. Me. Mine is a No! 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 Get out of here! You did this to yourself, I hope you know. Imagine somebody joins our server and that's what they think Map Chat is for. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh god! I can see you, You know! If you see somebody in the Map Chat, just know that they're on my shit list. <laughs> yes! People, people start posting images of children in Map Chat. Write down their IP addresses. Jesus, uh, new targets for the hit list, boys. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's about damn time. Welcome back to Good Corner K4, uh, where we talk about murdering uh, molesters. Mm. I'm Smalls your bad. Florist, joined it's by... our brand. It's our brand. It's our brand. Tony Enterprises, we sponsor the execution of uh, diddlers and nonces of all kinds. And shapes and colors. We don't On discriminate. record. On record. Chad behavior. Uh, last time, our Vagabal Zikai, our group of mercenaries, uh, received another job from their friend, the captain, owner and operator of the condemned mercenary bar. Uh, their epic, uh, long-winded mission was to uh, wait tables, tend a bar, and cook food. Uh, a job which they did uh, to a mediocre degree. Part through their little uh, ship there, the captain introduced them to a young, quote-unquote, young man named, uh, codenamed Vendetta, who would be joining the group's team as their dedicated medical professional. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. He's got a, he's got a van that has off-road tires, even though he lives in the biggest metropolitan area in the world. Don't ask me, I didn't make the character. <laughs> um, and then immediately after meeting their, their new companion, the group discovered, much to their shock and horror, that their good buddy, their best friend, uh, Krommel, Vladimir Krommel, had been kidnapped by uh, a group of Moonlighter thugs from the Crimson Crescent uh, and taken to a place unknown. Uh, and the group decided that they were going to go after their friend. And uh, in order to do so, they needed to do some nice little investigation. They checked out Krommel's apartment. They figured out uh, that he had indeed been kidnapped by these three guys. Uh, they figured out after Cromwell managed to injure one of the one of his kidnappers, they got a partial facial uh, image of one of the kidnappers, and then Mr. Vendetta used that partial image to edit together, stitch up a full face that they could run through uh, Google and Sci-Fi LinkedIn, and they got a, a Hitman's profile on the internet. And, and tracked him down to a club uh, that they didn't know the name of last time, but they do know the name of it now. And that club, which this guy, the guy's name is, when I find it again, uh, it is uh, Roland Sartori. Mr. Sartori frequents a bar, a nightclub, that is called the Golden Artery. And it is across the street from the minimum security uh, uh, containment incorporated prison uh, which holds the local Crimson Crescent accountant, although technically his rank would be uh, that of treasurer 
Mr. Edwin Zanoni, and Zanoni uh, purposefully keeps himself locked up in prison because he basically owns the prison. He pays off the guards, and he, a bunch of his gangbangers are, you know, also prisoners in the complex. So he pretty much runs the place from the inside, and he conducts his operations, manages the local Crimson Crescent financial situation from behind bars, and he happens to also uh, secretly own this club, the Golden Artery. And uh, the hitman attends this club, frequents it uh, pretty uh, commonly, and the group decided that their next uh, course of action would be either to try to get a meeting with Zanoni and figure out what his deal is, or, as the group later decided, to go to this bar and uh, sort of do the old Uno reverse card on this Sartori guy and kidnap him and force him to tell the group where he took their good friend, their best friend of many years, uh, their their amigo, Mehor, uh, Mr. Cromwell. So yeah, we rejoin our heroes the day after their uh, meeting, the day after their shift, the day after their discovery of their front's unfortunate kidnapping, after you guys have had a little bit of a sleep, a little bit of rest, you're no longer fatigued, because you were approaching that point uh, towards the end of last session. So, you know, you all wake up, you're all fresh, rejuvenated, rip rare, and ready to go. What do? Want to just real time talk about the plan instead of just doing it? Yeah, sure. All right, six. So, the setup so far, to my understanding, will be Oid is on infiltration, uh, <clears throat> disguising himself as civilian number, what have you. Um. A uh, random civilian number six hundred eighty-two thousand four hundred fifty-two. Yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, <clears throat> Knox will be providing Overwatch, if I'm correct, from the roof, trying to find a way in. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Bonus will be assisting Knox. He is. And I'll be on surveillance, which means our new member, Vendetta, will be uh, keeping me rather safe while I'm in the Matrix. And while keeping me monitored, if anything goes wrong while I'm in Matrix, then he can immediately treat it. Yeah, we... I don't know if he's dealt with anyone in the Matrix, so probably showing this safe pullout would be also good. This is true. I can also brief him on how to safely pull someone out of the Matrix. Well, yeah. Better question is, uh, am I going to be using bonuses cover car or hover bike? Which one's quieter? Depends. All depends on which one bonus wants to give you. Well, he's assumably with me, so. Yes. But I said. There... But yeah. Uh... All depends on which one bonus wants to use. Which one's ever quieter? Well, the hover car has a quicker getaway. Cool. And less possibility of getting shot off of it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, for the escape plan, just in case. 
or he does get fined out, or more or less someone sees him in a restricted area. How you want to go about that? If who gets found out? If Oid walks in, because assuming he's going to be in a, a restricted area, that's not to civilians. So how are we gonna how are we gonna deal with that? Oh, well, Tyro is gonna pick up some flash grenades. Okay. Uh, and he's gonna shut the power out completely, and then we're gonna bust in there and help our boy out. And if we can going get to, to the guy, the, uh, the backup, in case anything goes wrong, so he's, he's bringing his like big guns for this. Oh, uh, this is true. We are. Like, I need to see what I'm bringing. <laughs> we are kind of hitting up a big spot. This is true. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Um, I need to get night vision on my mask because my night vision doesn't pass through my mask, does it? It if should be able to. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense why it couldn't. Oh, so. All right. <laughs> well, all right then. Um. Okay. Cool. Uh. Let's see. I'm definitely going to be wearing my PE vest. Um. Alright, well I'm definitely bringing both of my revolvers. I'm bringing the hands of Anubis. Um. We go with Cyrus. Uh, I think that's all I really got. Well, I'll have the, um, <laughs> oh wait, I forgot I had that too. <laughs> I forgot I had a, a steel baseball bat with an internal gyroscope. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, I'll probably bring the baseball bat <laughs> and my sword. Bro, dual wield melee? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have the uh, dual processing screen, right? Yeah, this is... So yeah, there you go. Right, yeah, parallel processing, yeah. Very parallel processing. Oh, oh in oh, theory. Yeah. In theory, I could bring both of my melee weapons. Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, so I think, that, I think that'll do. Four yeah. pistols and two melee weapons. There should be enough. Uh, and then I'll just have yeah. to buy. I'll just have to buy some uh, flash grenades. So, uh, uh, will Vendetta join me on this venture to go get uh, some wares? I don't think so. Hmm? Vendetta's poor, yeah. so. Yeah, but this also show. gets him in the door with some of our contacts. Gets his face around. I mean, I won't buy anything, but I'll come. All right, yeah, sick. We'll make wow. a day out of I it. I can't believe you insisted that it's a window shop while you purchase a bunch of expensive equipment. <laughs> I mean, if you knew my backstory, you'd be like, "Oh, okay, that makes sense," but you don't. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, as to why you're poor? Yeah. Well, it sucks to suck. Get your sucks money. To suck. Get your money up or get your funny up. <laughs> get your money up before you get your funny up. You gotta make the noise. <laughs> okay, so you're looking for flashbang grenades? Yes, uh, the fancy ones. The nine bang. Ones. The ones that don't just flash once. That good shit. Bro, strobe light in a can. I mean, there are upgrades for weapons. I think I even have uh, cyber on The upgrades. shield has it, I think, too. I already have light level correction. We all have light level correction. For yeah. our mask, yeah. Masks. 
get more cyber eye upgrade? Yeah, well, I, I haven't even filled it out yet, but I did add um, a strobe light for your eye so you could cause your eye to strobe. That's nuts. Which would be really wacky to, to see, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you take crazy. that over like something else, but yeah, if, if I ever end up having a, a use for that, that's gonna look so wack. <laughs> I mean, there is a use for that. CQC combat. CQC, someone's looking right at you in the eyes. You just blind them. <laughs> yeah. You just blind them. <laughs> it's not better you hypnotize them. Literally, literally just like a solar flare suite. Like just <laughs> blinds people looking at you. <gasps> yeah, bro. Yeah, so we're, I guess you'll, you'll be going to the Jamaican guy then, right? For uh, flashbangs. That is who he was. What is that? You're going to the Jamaican guy. Oh, hell yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh, Cairo and Vendetta head over to. I guess probably you'd have to ask Bonus, and then Bonus would have to ask his contact for, like, the address where his truck is currently set. And then... Other than that, I can, I can make my own contact for all of his broker. I mean, I guess at this point probably would. So you could just like text him and be like, hey, where are you? And then he'll send you an address. And then you guys drive to like an industrial park or like a corporate <laughs> plaza where this like, I think it's a, I think it's a taco truck, isn't it? Yeah. You know, he liked, I, mean, I, think, I think the gimmick was that he changed the food that his truck sells like every day. Every so that day, nobody can ever tell like who he really is or what he actually does. Um, so today he is a uh, Korean food truck. Uh, being stabbed by a Jamaican how, man. How funny. How funny. Convenient. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, so I guess Kyra would pick Vendetta up and then drive by a cool car. Taking to, uh, the nice car. <laughs> yeah, via the NDRR local vehicle to uh, this, like, random corporate park somewhere in the district. And then he... Uh, walks you over to this like Korean barbecue food truck. There's a, a Jamaican guy inside of it cooking food and listening to like reggae music on like the I'll radio. Turn to him. I'll be like, usually they sell tacos here. Tacos? But they're, they're selling food from Co Korea. Yeah, I know. And the Jamaican guy turns around and he's like, Ah, no tacos today, my brother. Today we do the Korean barbecue. See? And Usually it's tacos. <laughs> like, I heard they, they, they caught, the KPD caught wind of my operation in the taco truck, so I had to change my gimmick, you know? So to keep safe. Is it... Is it good? As soon as, as soon as someone catches on <laughs> that, that he's possibly a criminal and criminally selling weapons, he just changes foods. Mm -hmm. yeah, he changes I mean, it's like basically things. what you do with your apartment number. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I do change my apartment number every day. Yeah. Same room, different number. Exactly, it's to throw people off. One no one catches telling... the scent if they don't know the apartment number. That's true. Uh, yeah, so the Jamaican guy's like, all right, my brothers, what can I do for you today? Well, first things first, I'd like you to introduce you to my friend here. Hi there. Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Vendetta. Oh, look at the doctor and... friend now, do you? Very, very good, my friend. Very good. And he will be joining our crew as an associate. Yeah, so... The Jamaican guy, like, shakes, shakes your hand, um, and he has, like, this really... I mean, you probably would tell because you have like a, a, a ripstock hand. So you, you can tell that his hand is his bionic arm is similar, and then it's like a Swiss Army knife. But you figure his is probably for like weaponsmithing, so you can see that it has like screwdrivers and like welding torches and, and you know different stuff for for tweaking weaponry. Uh, That's really kind of I've got a perfect cool. comparison for what this guy is like to give you an idea. <laughs> jolly, jolly. A Jamaican guy. It's quite an interesting arm you got there, buddy. Like, oh, you know, I have to use it, the tools of my trade. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> like so, what uh, what are you here to to buy today? Well, well five well. orders of bulgogi. My <laughs> God, you want actual food? Well, you are definitely well, new. He he so wants much. actual food. I'm here for something a little spicier. Like, well, I'll work on the food first. And he, uh, Is he bulgogi? Begins to like make the food. As he's making the food, he's like, So, my my uh, Egyptian friend, what are you here for today? I'm gonna need something that, uh. <coughs> well, uh, can light up a room. About nine times over. <laughs> that is quite the description. He's like, Ah, oh, you're looking for, uh. Should we say something spicy? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be accurate. Like God does the thing right here, and he like uh, as he's like leaving the, the the meat and stuff to cook and everything to to simmer, he like uh, reaches behind one of like uh, you know, like you know bends over behind the counter and he picks up this like milk crate full of different grenades. <laughs> he just uh, slams it on the counter. A milk crate? Yeah, a milk crate. It just, <laughs> Full of you know frag grenades, EMP grenades, cryo grenades, uh, you know incendiary smoke, flash bang, frag, AG, anti tank, acid, pepper pepper gas. Is that acid? I feel acid. like it's acid. it's a sampler. Yeah. That he has. Uh, it's just like good. oh you want this one? All right. And he takes out a <laughs> different box full of them. So. Yeah. Like so a, a twenty-four mixed pack of like chips. Bro. Grenades. Cheese platter of grenades. Oh. So. Yeah. Mm. How much? Uh, uh, well, I'm gonna need like three flashbang grenades, approximately. Uh, how much is an acid grenade? Right. An I'm acid grenade? My... Oh, I'm I'm very much interested in an acid grenade. <laughs> well, the, the flashbang grenades are not the, the most expensive thing in the world. You know that. You 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 bought this stuff for me for me before, have you not? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure I bought more grenades to to handle you and the bonuses, uh, you know, purchases than I have anyone else. Oh well, that just means we keep the door moving. You like your your grenades? Not that much. <clears throat> it gets the job done. <laughs> this is the most casually I've ever heard anyone talk about grenades. <laughs> hey, you know what? Like I have other things too, my friend. If you want to do more than just window shop, eh? I, yeah. I, he might I, have something within your price range, I'm or not, I can I'm just spot the tab yeah. for you. Uh, it's all right. I'll I'll, I'll wait. Uh, fair enough. Until I have a little bit more funds. Fair enough. Suit, Suit yourself. yourself, poor boy. <laughs> <laughs> get your money up before you get your funny up, and then he does like yeah. the oh, you got something on your shirt thing to him. Yeah. Boy, what is boy supposed to be? Oh. Oh. God. I'm 31 years old. I'll have you know. Get your money up before you get your funny up. I'm 25 and I got 100k in the bank. God. I used right, to have so that stun much. Stun grenades will be a uh, thousand colors each, so that's 3k. That's light money. And then acid grenades will probably be uh, like 1.5 each. You could afford a crate of grenades. That's it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Grenades aren't that expensive. I'll take I'll take an acid grenade and an incendiary grenade. You've got yourself a deal. Okay, well, incendiary is also a thousand. So if you're getting three stun grenades, it's three k. Four k for the incendiary, so it's five and a half k in total. That's that's nothing. <laughs> this guy's prices can't be beat. That's more than my rent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's such that's such a good. Uh... Whoa. K4, K4 in a nutshell, am I right? <laughs> Five and a half K? This guy's prices can't be touched! God, I'm that just- more than my <laughs> rent! I'm just uh, imagining the scene now, with Alex, you know, in his, like, standard, you know, pedestrian yeah. wear in like, Cairo, but he's like, walks up in, like, this, like, uh, like, fur coat, and he's got, like, <laughs> seven chains around his neck, and- Level 35 just... mob boss! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Drops five and a half thousand colors on only grenades. 
<laughs> yes, yes, bro. Really? That's it? Yo, know, that's that's all it's worth. And he's like, bro, that's more than my rent. <laughs> uh, that that really is a get your get your money up moment. <laughs> that's polarizing. God, the rest of the group's like, man, that's like jump change. <laughs> that yeah. is, it is, it is jump change. Alex, look at your uh, PMs really quick. I look at my empty wallet. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Will I be able to afford... If, oh. Like I said, if you need something, I can spot it for you for now, as long as you get me back later. Can you spot me for the Bagogi? And, uh, the Jimmy like, no way. I can be on the house, my friend. You, uh, new customer. <laughs> Friend and family oh, discount for you. I'll remember this. <laughs> I don't tell the other character, my friend. Don't have, to, don't have to remember everything I say. Oh. He's not a debt collector. Yeah. But he... Right. I'm sure he knows some. <laughs> Good that you say that, because I hate carrying debt. Oh, well, duly noted. <laughs> he immediately changes his mind. <laughs> well, in that case, my friend, you owe me 85,000 kala, okay? Next week with interest, when I kill you myself. <laughs> I don't want your food. Next food. What the fuck is that Bukogi made out of? Oh, it looks like that ramen, bro. <laughs> oh, you're Bukogi. right, it is like that fucking ramen. ramen. Bro, fucking goatee infused with gold? Yeah, 85,000 collars, you better put all the meth in this Bukogi. <laughs> Uh, Carol turned to uh, Vendetta and be like, now if you think his food's good, have I got a spot for you. I am very used to synthetic foods. Oh, oh, you're in for a treat. I, I think I'll wait till I can afford it. That's nah, fine, I got you on this one. Oh boy. Trust you me. Insist. Trust me on this. And at that same point, I'll hit a bonus to meet us at Huang's Little China. Ooh, I'm out. Chinese uh, food, you say? Huang is Chinese, my guy. Racist. Huang's I'm Korean. I'm sure they won't like me very much. <laughs> yeah, it's fine under the mask, no one can tell. Oh, that's true. So, uh, yeah, let's pay for our wares and his, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Bagogi. Bagogi, and uh, it's we'll, beef. Uh, we'll head over to Huang's Little China. You make, I make beef it a beef, my brother. <laughs> <sighs> no problem for you. And you leave the crazy Jamaican guy whose name I forget. Uh, I give him a fist pump. Uh, he, he does fist pump you back. He's chill. He no, dabs me up. Cool. cool guy is Jamaican, man. <clears throat> Can cool I get the ox? Make, man. Hmm? Can I get the ox on the way to the to the restaurant? Am I going to regret this? No. I'd hope not. If you play any whack shit, <laughs> I will hit the ejector seat. Do you have an ejector seat? I don't know. But you'll find out if you play some whack shit. Uh, you, you forgot what was that that you said earlier? Uh, Dolly noted. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'll pass you the ox. Mm, let's see what's on Curl Cloud today. Ah. Ah, yes. This is one of my favorite artists. His name's Pharaoh. <laughs> We're at a stoplight, and, and it's like it's the so uh, metal nice grinding way. just slow turn. <laughs> <laughs> The e yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do, do, do you know do you not know who that is? Huh? Do you, do you know who that is? Wait, hold on. I really like this this particular riff. Give me a sec. Uh, I heard that. That is yeah. that is literally me. Oh. Wait, really? What? Yes. Oh. Dude, sick! I've been uh, I've been following your music for like the last six this months. This is this is literally my set from Berlin. Oh. You went to Berlin? 
Isn't that the why I can't go back? That's why I can't go back there. You're, you're, you're banned from Berlin? Yes! What? For the stupidest reasons. It's very, very hard to get banned from a country, I'll have you know. I know. <laughs> Especially when it's a corporate country. Yes. I, you know, I don't I don't even want to know if I'm being perfectly We honest. told you already. I am very forgetful. <laughs> well, <he's> honest. <laughs> That's a lie. I have an Adic memory chip. I remember literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am with you. <laughs> wow. It's pretty hard to forget. Gaslight gatekeep girl. Pause, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gaslight gatekeep your memories. You have to understand that I'm literally girl bossing right now. Something's hey man, I don't girl? know what's in your pants. I don't think you want to find out, big boy. Correct. I don't. God, the sexual tension in this car. God. <laughs> like the anyway. rest of the crew is back there. Like <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think I'm gonna play a different song from this album, if you don't mind. I mean, fair enough. Have you ever considered getting into R and B? No. Please don't. <laughs> I didn't plan on it. I kind of have. I kind of have my niche shtick. <laughs> no. Shtick. Uh, this is the first interaction with a fan Kyra's ever had. <laughs> How does he feel about? It? <laughs> Quite conflicted. <laughs> oh, I really like this song. I think I played it like 15 times. Well, good to know. <laughs> good to know. You'll love the next show that I do then. Huh. You're gonna do another show? When? No, I, don't, I don't know yet. I've gotta figure out the scheduling and the, the... All of the planning. I've gotta figure all that stuff out. I'm the only one that handles this shit. <laughs> you don't say. Yes, huh. yes, I do say. Do say? You have do say right now? What? You've never heard of do say, the very famous alcoholic beverage? No. No, I can't say that I have. That's unfortunate. Well, to Huang's. <laughs> such an awkward. Uh, on the way there, Kyra's gonna ask. Uh, and then tell him more about uh, why he's here. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's kind of tough. Or what? Oh, at least what brought him here? Hmm. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to talk about, if I'm being perfectly honest. I don't like recalling it very much. But. I will tell you that it did have to do with an ambulance. Fair enough. And when I find out who was responsible, I'm going to stick their spine down their own throat. I'm going to rip it from their back and shove it into their esophagus. I'm not sure the Hippocratic Oath. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure the Hippocratic Oath has something to say about it, but, uh. Ah. Doesn't matter. I'd be able to fix it anyways. Who's keeping score? <laughs> I am. I'm keeping score. I have tally marks for it on my phone. I keep it on my you know notepad. What? You know what? Fair enough. They call me Vendetta for a reason. Well, alrighty then. <laughs> Alright, the grenades have been added to your sheet. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, do we arrive at Wong's Little China? You, Bro. So you guys arrive uh, in this, like, uh, I mean, I guess it's a rundown part of Ryan's town, but it's, the, the restaurant building itself is actually really nice looking. Um, it's this big open storefront, what you would imagine, like, a modern day, like, ch knockoff Chinese restaurant to look like. But, like, it's, it's like, fancier. So there's, like, a nice, like, border, well, the awning, with the Chinese, like, shrine style. There's... Like the Chinese lanterns, paper lanterns hanging from the awning. You know, it's very, very, very nice warm light leaking through the, the inside. 
super warm and welcoming and, and you know it looks like nice like much nicer than the other buildings around here um, this intersection has one heck of a history uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me all the stuff that yeah. in front of this building uh, so there's that and uh, yeah the, this big sign written in like that like stereotypical Chinese font but for English writing uh, it says Huang's Little China uh, restaurant hmm all right, <clears throat> we've got a history with these people, so you do. Yeah. All right, I'll try to be respectful then. Yes, please. They, uh, we we've done a few favors for them. Uh, they're very appreciative. So every time we come in, we uh, you know, give them a little bit more on uh, the side of uh, gratuity. Good to know. They're very kind. Nothing to worry about. Does bonus arrive at the same time? Uh, yeah, see, the bonus is uh, well, his hover car is uh, parked out front already. All right. Well, let's head in. Is that our guy's ride? Huh? That that car over there, the the hover car. Yeah, that's bonus. Uh... He's already inside. Oh, okay. I guess we'll meet him up inside. Exactly. All so, right. Yeah, so you guys um, head on inside, uh, and you know there's there's a little like a maitre d's little podium, um, and the uh, this would be the daughter because there's three generations of, of family that work in this place. It's the grandparents, the parents, and then, then the children. Uh, the, the mother, the, the middle generation, uh, she's behind the lectern and she sees. Uh, car went there and she's like, oh, hello, hello, sir, welcome back. It's been a while. Ah, good to see you again. And I'll give a, I'll give a slight bow to them. Uh, and she, like, gives you a, a slight bow back. She's like, oh, I believe your friend, Mr. Bonus, is uh, waiting in your booth. Ah, perfect. How's everybody doing? Everyone's okay? He's like, oh, yes, yes, everybody's been doing just fine. Thank you for asking. Good to hear. Uh, and then, uh, I'll have Vendetta come with me to the booth. So, yes, you walk through this, like, nice, uh, open restaurant, uh, floor. Like, you know, like, the booths along the walls, and then there's a bunch of tables in the middle. And then against the far wall, it's like a, kind of like a fast food, like, counter. But with a big menu up above. Um, except that rather than being, like, an actual fast food kitchen, you see that there's, like, a legit, like, huge kitchen back there. And there's, like, um... An, an, an elderly Chinese couple back there working, and then there would also be uh, uh, the father, the husband, a middle-aged man, Chinese man back there as well, all in little aprons and stuff, cooking up a storm. And there is a few people in here. This place sells real food, not the fake stuff, so it is uh, pre prohibitively expensive for most people to afford. But you know, some people manage. You see. I'll tell you right now, Alex, out of character, this is the most wholesome encounter we've ever had. Yeah, huh. very, very sweet people. These <clears> the Huang <throat> family. Uh, and you see that off in one of the corners, cordoned off by like uh, sort of sheer silk, like red uh, Chinese patterned curtains, is like a little private booth area. I mean, you can just see uh, bonus sitting in the booth by himself. Very fancy. Is it a solo booth, or...? Uh, no, it looks to be big enough for, like, five, six people. Oh, well, then we're gonna join him there. Alright, so you can walk in, uh, and you would notice that on, like, the, 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 the wood paneling of the booth as you enter, it says, Dedicated to Bonus and Pharaoh. Wow, it seems like you guys are famous around here. Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's pretty amazing how uh, how far a little gratitude goes. All right, acknowledge. Yeah, bonus is sitting there. His mask is still on. Um, he like as far as you guys can tell, he's just been staring into space when you guys walk up. Like he doesn't say anything, doesn't do anything. I'll I'll get in and take my mask off. 
sort of. I guess I'll do the same. You brought the, uh, the newbie, huh? <laughs> yeah, I figure I'd show him around a few places. It has been an interesting day so far. Yeah. Well, he did meet your uh, arms dealer. <laughs> the guy, I'm Jamaican fellow, hmm? Yeah, no one knows his name. We just call him the Jamaican. He gave me full gogi. <sighs> Wait until you try their food. <laughs> you know they're gonna charge me eighty-five thousand dollars for the food as a joke. <laughs> but it's chuckles. He's like, yeah, that sounds like him. I paid uh, five thousand for grenades, and he admitted that it's more than his rent. Oh, and the, the Jamaican the Jamaican, the Jamaican guy's name is Malachi Elixir. Oh yeah, Malachi? that's true. Yeah. Malachi Elixir. Mister Elixir. Mm -hmm. So after uh, a couple of, of minutes of waiting, uh, the granddaughter, uh, the youngest daughter, who's like early 20s, uh, she uh, ducks her head into the little private privacy curtain that separates you guys from the rest of the uh, restaurant. The rest of the peasantry in here. Yeah. And she's like, ah, hello, everyone. Um, good, you know, nice to see you guys in. I see you, you, you found your, your special booth. Yeah, my grandparents are done putting it in. Uh, she says, look, what can I get uh, you? Yes. Uh, I'll have my usual. She's like, all right, of course, and then you missed your bonus. And bonus is like, uh, give me my usual low main, but uh, get it to go. She's like, all right. And she's like, and, and for you, sir. Um, I'm not really sure what to order. Uh, do you have any recommendations? Uh, well, you, you would have, as soon as you sat down in the booth, you would have received an AR message that is the, the full menu. Um, and fortunately, the prices here are ludicrous. I'm talking like each dish is, is several hundred dollars <laughs> to buy, not uh, minimum. Uh, but it is all like legit food that they've delivered in Arrow Grow themselves and stuff like that. Um, and they've got all kinds of different traditional foods. They have some like more like Americanized Chinese food, like, you know, the stuff you we might see in a modern Chinese restaurant that's not actually from China, but like people think it is. Like ah, so like chicken kind of thing. Yeah, or, or you know, chicken wings or, you yeah. know, beef and broccoli, that American Chinese food. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I have, hmm. You can see an expression on my face that says, uh, I can't afford any of this. Uh, bonus, bonus for you to send you, like, an AR message, uh, that says, like, I'll cover your bill. I send one wow. back, and, uh, are, are, are you sure? Uh, bonus is like, yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh... I'll have the Mongolian beef and a glass of water. She's like, all right, lovely. And she's like, uh, I'll be right back. And then she uh, hurries off, uh, and you can, you can hear her like across the room, like yelling words in Mandarin at her family, yelling, yelling your order <laughs> at her oh. grandparents um, in Mandarin, uh, which Kyra can understand because he has a text translator. But yes, nobody else. I does. do too. Oh, yeah, you do too, don't you? <laughs> Uh, yes, you can understand them. Um, bonus speaks Mandarin, like normally, so... <laughs> you can also... But nobody knows that. I think, I think only Chiron knows that he can speak Mandarin. Uh, yeah, because I've seen him do it. Yeah, but he speaks <coughs> Mandarin. Um, oh, wait, no, actually, I don't on this character. I like, like, oh, I like Grinch. Yeah, I he did. Um, so, yeah, so you can't understand them. Uh, and then a few, probably like a, a, a couple minutes later... Uh, she comes back with your drinks, uh, and she brings a complimentary bottle of rice wine. Ooh. Carol will have a little bit of that. Uh, bonus will not, because Bonus can't take his mask off in front of a stranger, so... <laughs> I don't know. He's just, he's just sitting here watching you guys drink, basically. I'll get a glass to go. Um, I guess I'll have a small taste, but nothing more. Because this is legit rice wine and not like yeah. synthetic, artificially flavored BS. Uh, it's this probably is like the best thing you've tasted. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Not many places in the world make uh, synthetic food. Or non-synthetic food, I should say. I think you'd be able to tell on Vendetta's face that he's enjoying his meal, but he doesn't really speak up about it. Have a little bit of a drink, and then um, you know, a few minutes after that, uh, she goes back, uh, and her, her mother would also come with her, bringing out the platters of food for everybody in the little box uh, for bonuses food. So, uh, bonus. Um. Yeah, could you uh, tell me the story on uh, how how you guys got so famous around here? Right, like, well, well, that uh, takes us back almost a year at this point for this place. He's like, uh, a few months ago, we stumbled upon this place randomly. Uh, Mr. Oid had an encounter with some uh, strange priests right outside, and then also. He was a few, a few days after uh, he had that encounter with those priests and he turned one gay. Uh, he also huh? encountered, like, a robbery going on where he, like, shot a cop and killed a robber and then stole the bag of money the guy had. It was a, it was a whole whole debacle. We had to, like, hide the money because he saw from the from the Crescent. We had to impersonate some dudes. It became uh, a thing. Uh, but for this building in particular, uh, we were... We stumbled upon the place by accident, came in here, and the family offered to give us a lifelong discount, pretty much, if we uh, helped convince their grandson, the youngest of their family, uh, to, to dissuade him from joining the Mafu clan. And uh, we had a talk with him. Uh, Mr. Farrow here made the little made, made the young man cry. Then we came back a few days later to check up on him, and we found out that the Mafu clan had kidnapped him, intent on trafficking him. Uh, across the ocean to China. Uh, so I conducted a crusade. Uh, Mr. Farrow, Boyd, and myself went to the docks, you know, where we, we figured out they were keeping the young man, and we proceeded Pretty sure to I almost died. Yeah, well, we did. I almost died. I got shot in the chest by an Uzi and almost died. Yeah? Um, well... Yeah, we, we pretty much dismantled that, that operation and saved the dozen people that they were planning on smuggling out of the country. Well, out of the city. I have to tell you, that is quite the story. Yeah. Would you turn somebody gay? Yes. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, he, uh, Famously so. He, he, he basically, uh, I don't know, did some, some therapy mumbo jumbo. I don't know. Every time he tells the story, he just says that he looked at the guy and said that it's okay to be gay, and the guy was like, falling his eyes out. I don't know. I don't think he, sometimes I think he's lying about it, but I can't prove him wrong. He, so no, he, he no, he's telling the truth. Every time he tells that story, it's true. I passed. No, no, because I passed the guys first. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, I got stuck you're gay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's can incredibly funny. To the... you know, it's like it's okay to be to gay. Infiltrate Flavius's uh, tower. Yes. Flavius. The the Flavius Meridius. Yeah. Yes. You guys know him? We well, have a uh, history. That was a strong word. Huh. Okay. I have no further questions. I am just uh, bamboozled. As, yes, as most people are when talking about him. I, essentially, I blew up his penthouse, but it's no big deal. You you blew you blew up Flavius Morenius' penthouse. Yes. And I should have done more. But it's like, and then I shot his hacker. So, not only are you a renowned rock star, you are also the man who blew up Flavius Morenius' penthouse. His, yeah, his pretty suite. Much. That was on the news. Yeah, I know. You did that was the oh. goal. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was that was the objective. Yes. Well. All right. Good to know. I'll I'll keep that in mind if I ever have to interact with him. There's um, a. Uh, I got a certain upgrade, just to spite him if I ever meet him again. 
How would you get an upgrade that would spite him? Uh, well, he's psychic. Flavius Morenius is psychic? Yes. We don't exactly know what he is. If I ever get my hands on him, maybe I'll be able to tell. <laughs> Good luck oh, yeah. with that. Speaking of which, uh, and, and, dying. Which is funny, because I am the only person that took precautions against that. Yeah, but you're also the only like person. Twice. Well, I think, I think you and Oi were the ones who, like, personally experienced uh, most of, of the weird shenanigans that, that Bobby has pulled. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because we were the only two that were really inside. Yeah. Well... Hopefully, going forward, if you guys find yourself in more uh, dire situations, death won't be immediately at your front door. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Things go pretty haywire quickly. Yeah. I've seen my fair share of things, but I don't think I've particularly blown up anyone's penthouse suite. Well, yeah, it was a good time. Good times. Did you reference that in your latest album? Uh, it was more of an artistic nod. Hmm. I think I'll be uh, looking a bit more into your lyrics. Yeah. Don't think of it as, a, as an admission of guilt or so. Uh, a coup de grace, so to speak. Yeah. Well... I had some theories, but I guess that solidifies it. <laughs> Wait, so you were also on TV for that that car that we just rode in. Essentially, the, the same one that Flavius Morenius also participated in. Yes. It's like, oh, you mean the MTRR? Yeah. Yeah. Well, think about I it like this it. way. Right. Think about it this way. We helped the winning team. But it's lastly, we you... made the winning team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You had a direct part in that? Yes. Why do you think the Jackson car f fell out of the air like Christ, it did? I remember that. It was... <laughs> well... You guys really are an interesting bunch. Yes. We are directly in link with the full fuel racing team. Yeah. Speaking of uh, being an interesting bunch, uh, I guess we shouldn't get uh, too caught up in uh, talks of your feats. Perhaps we should actually start getting down to business. We do have to engineer a couple things for uh, our raid on this place. So that is I think true. the only thing we have to hammer out is a meetup time. And that guy's face. <laughs> Well, no. Oid, Oid, Oid's pretty good at coming up with uh, people on the spot. Ah. He's got quite a few, actually. Quite a few of them have cons, actually. Hmm. So, I'm not too worried about it. Well, I think Oid's got this handled, but the uh, biggest part is getting the exploits to get me access to that... Uh, that bars electronics and whatnot. Think that'll be our biggest issue, but I could probably engineer my way around it. <sighs> All right, well, let's finish up on our meal, pay, and get to work. I will charge you. What, you're gonna pay a thousand? Yeah, the usual. good as, as always so, yeah. um, where, where, where are you
you guys off too now. Alright. Time to go back to my place and get on a Kraken. Alright, and what are you going to do at your place? I'm going to make a USB with a Trojan virus. Just a quick one to get me in. Okay. Um, yeah, give me a, an intelligence check for that. Alright. Un intelligente. Alright. That's a nine, good sir. Alright. That will take you a couple of hours to do. Nice, nice. The rest of you, any preparations that you want to be made? I don't think so. Well, I suppose I would like to confirm uh, when I infiltrate this place, am I just installing this Trojan and then I wait around for the breach or is there something more I need to accomplish whilst I'm there? If you can see anyone that we're actually looking for, like the guy that was injured or the other guy that was I think he I think the other guy was injured too, right? I think he had like a slight arm injury. Yeah. yeah. Both of them if you can see either of them, because we have their faces too. We have one face. I mean there's three of them, you have one face. Oh, okay. So if I you mean see... unless everyone looks the same but we only have one face. We only got the partial of the one guy, I think. Or if you can come across anyone talking about um Cromwell himself. That would be useful. That would also give us information to act upon. Probable cause and whatnot. Probable cause? Mm, yeah, I can see that. Well, that also gives us an idea on if Cromwell is there or not. True. 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 I'm assuming you want me to do the same thing, but from up top? Uh, yes, and I'll be keeping an eye on cameras and keeping Boyd's back watched. Alright. Mm. Alright. So is that, I guess we're uh, ready to conduct this plan then? I suppose so. Indeed we are. Do you want to take the van? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take the van? Yes, your van is needed. Okay. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I'll, I'll um see if there's any access ports up top. <laughs> And if there are, I'll wait for you to hack cameras, so that way I just have to worry about other people. Yeah. Right, so let me, let me, let me, I need to know who's with whom and where are they. So, I assume Cairo and uh, Vendetta are in the crash cart, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Nox and Bonus are in Bonus's hopper car. Probably, where, where would we park? Um, the crash car. Well, you need like a direct link to the building, right? Well, if I have a Trojan to get in. Well, you still need a, a, a Matrix port to enter the Matrix to make use of yeah. the Trojan. Yeah, and I don't know if his van has a Matrix port seat, so... No. Yeah. I can invest in one at some point, though. Yeah, so there's that. That's why I'm like, oh, you... wait, no, I could use, I could use Ankh, no? I'm gonna make for him mm. now. Can I install it really quick? That would be a long-winded process. Oh. Yeah, me, um, just go...
unless the alleyway can fit the van, you're parking somewhere nearby so you can run to the van. Well, you then we can take the van, if anything. You can call it, right? The yeah, I've got, I've got nerve linkages. Yeah, so you should be fine to just sneak in a back alley. That's why I was like, someone needs to protect your unconscious body. Exactly. So I, I just sit there. I sit there and mm -hmm. while uh, Paris is there. Sit there, stealth, see if a cat comes by, you know. Hmm. Mm. That'll do. Alright. Uh, and the point I assume is driving either his station wagon or the crime car. Oh, probably look more official now. I'm sure I should, I should mention, I might be like, dip out for a second. I think I have a birthday for a cake. Where's the child? I can't. Porch. Coward. Destroy the child. <laughs> Destroy the child. Suplex the child. So you guys are flying up in the hover lanes, uh, 50 stories above uh, our, your compatriots' heads. Hmm. And you head to the address where you guys are. And as you guys uh, sort of try to like pull off to, like the shoulder equivalent of the hover lanes and kind of you know, hover above the air, get a look down there. Uh, a big AR message flashes up on the windshield of Boyos' hover car with a big, like, warning triangle uh, and a message that says, uh, KKI restricted airspace, no loitering. Oh. Because, of course, you are across the street from, uh, what you would be oh, yeah. you be on the same side of the street as the Minsec prison. Oh. Uh, wait. We would? Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, well, I turned to Bones and be like, well... Um... How likely are they to see me just jump out the car? And you are 50 stories up, so you'd die if you were to leap anyway. This is oh, true. wait, the building's not that big? No, the club um, is one story. Technically, it's... Yeah, it's one story, um, but it's it's a, a type of club referred to as a hole in the wall. That being, you access it by walking down an alleyway between two of the buildings. It's all the way in the back of the alleyway. Um, it's uh. only one story. Uh, also, you would figure like a basement or something, probably. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is smaller-ish than the buildings around it. Well, it's a big building in terms of like horizontally, but it's not only a few stories tall and, and Buildings around are like huge apartment complexes, and of course the uh, insect prison. Those buildings are like 15 stories tall at the most, which is pretty small mm. for Ryanstown. <laughs> well, why well, just take the normal street and we can use the hover cars to get away? Begins moving the hover car again just so that, like, you don't get drone strike by the uh, automated security system from the prison. Because uh, you guys would know in advance and would see at this point um, that there are the standard uh, KKI prison patrol bots, which are these, like, a couple of feet by a couple of feet wide uh, automated hover drones. Um, and they, their job is to, like, patrol the, the air around the prison and, like, patrol the outskirts. Wait, of the we're walls. at the prison? Yeah, because the, the bar's across the, the street from the prison. Yeah. Oh, that's true, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the drones, their job is to, like, basically, if they see anybody trying to break out, anyone trying to break in, they will set the alarm off, and then they have tasers to shoot intruders or escapees uh, and tase them and disable them. So they're, like, a bunch of, you know, these big hover drones, not big, but hover drones flying around below you guys. Uh, but it's like, yeah, I don't want to incur the wrath of a bunch of, bunch of taser drones that will EMP <laughs> the, the hover car, which is the sheer quantity of taser being shot. Yeah. There. So he, you know, to like a lap around the block or whatever, and then, like, descends with 
the uh, heel broken dissension speed limiter. Uh, like, you know, <laughs> slams down to the ground, uh, converts yeah, like, oh. to a normal car. And you guys sit in just... town traffic for eight hours while you try to do a single lap around the block. <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know. I'd. If we do find a spot, it'd be like, well. Uh, do you want to go up top with me? Um, bonus. We'll say no. Like I think I'm fine staying out here. If you guys need any help, then I can draw attention, kick the front door in. All right. And then I'll, I'll get out of the car. I'll start moving, schmoving. Um. Probably not worried too much about cameras thanks to blind spot coding, but still keep an eye on them. Be like, oh, okay, that's where one is. And uh, start my ascension. Also, cake is going to be called soon, so I will depart now. Just be in position, I suppose. So that way, uh, when I come back, I'm ready. Yeah? All right. That's it. When it's just chilling in his car, listening to uh, uh, K-pop music, blasting from Gummy Volume. He had it fucking silent the whole time. The moment I get out, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> you're like, oh my god. Uh, so yeah, in that case, uh, with that happening, and then uh, Vendetta and Pharaoh are in the crash cart. Be like you know, it'll be like a block down or something, parked in like an alleyway, waiting for Boyd to do his thing. I would assume at this point Boyd rolls up in the crime car, and uh, yeah, you know it's a hole in the wall bar, so you get out, and there's like a line of people uh, that like walks down this you know 60, 80 foot alleyway and like big starts to wrap around the side of the building so i assume you guys wouldn't be going at like two in the afternoon i assume you would be going at like you know it's a little bit later at night yeah six nine o'clock at night uh so yeah mr boyd disguised as civilian number 872 uh are you gonna wait in line or are you going to like march up to the you know the bouncer at the front door and be like do you know who i am i am carl oppenheimer and i demand to be letting this damage in right now oh, you really could <laughs> really I could do that I didn't carl oppenheimer. Do like, oh, yeah. I'm so as it's either that or you can be the gay priest <laughs> uh <laughs> really uh, bust out some of the old ones well, Don I'd... the bean jimmy jambo jr and his Funny, uh, be... uncanny smile I think uh, I would prefer to keep a bit lower of a profile, you know what I'm saying? Oh, if you're Carl right. Oppenheimer, and you could, you could shove your way to the front and they'd respect it. Uh, yes, if you want to wait in, in line, you can uh, be a good, good citizen and not cause any trouble. You know, wait longer than you're supposed to, and eventually it probably takes like a solid 45 minutes to like an hour uh, for this back, which is probably like 7.30 midnight, I'll say, 8.30, 8.30 at night. Um, the sun has set at this point. Uh, you know, and, and as you kind of, you know, you get, you get into the, the, the alleyway proper, you see that above the door is, of course, this big neon sign that says the Golden Artery, and it has like as sort of the logo for the building is uh, the, the this neon sign with like a hologram projected over it. And so somebody is looking for a forearm, like a clenched fist. And there are two like pinprick holes in the forearms, like veins, and then it's they're, they're dripping golden blood. And uh, yeah, it's a big, huge sign. So these set double doors on the building. And there are two, two bouncers here. There's one buff-looking uh, human guy, and then there is a uh, bouncer drone. Oh. Yeah, bouncer drone is wearing a uh, like you know 
sci-fi North Face puff jacket. And like gold chain around his neck, big beefy robot. These are fairly standard, especially in like like the Crescent uh, clubs. Uh, they're non-sentient, but they do have dumb AI in them to like help them distinguish, you know, friend and foe and stuff like that. Uh, they just are sort of supposed to help bolster security. They got paid for more employees after the Crescent. He's worried about manpower. you get to the, to the you know, front of the line and then the bouncer's like, ah, can I get your name? And you're like, my name is uh, Barry White. And you're like, alright, get in there, buddy, have a well of a time. And they uh, let you through the front door and you enter into this dark hallway. And there's like a little staircase that goes up and then the uh, the hallway has another sign in front of you. Says the Golden Artery, and uh, at this point, the music—it's like you know, you've walked through the door. The music is bumping something furious. Uh, your stereotypical, super bass-heavy house music. Uh, this, this is like dark house music. So it's like extra bass, super edgy lyrics. You know how it is. And the the hallway forks uh, to the right, to the left. And then, uh, when I pull up the image of the, the, the knife, I'll tell you, but it goes to where? Uh, to, the, to the left, uh, there's like a sign on the wall that points you, uh, this is basically like off to the left is uh, weapons check and coat check. Because this is like an actually like a upper class-ish level establishment. So they do have a coat check um, and also a weapons check. So. I don't know if you would have brought any weapons with you on your person, but if you did, uh, let me know, because that will be important. Uh, I probably would have brought, like, uh, a pistol with me in one of my concealed compartments. Okay. Um, are you going to check that into, uh... Weapons table or no? Well, this is just like you know, some guy at the front. Right? Yeah, I can I can post the floor plan in uh, maps. She has. You know, this is the second time we'll be uh, conducting essentially a hit on a club. Yeah, I mean nightclubs are. One of the primary means by which organized crime makes and launders their money. Uh, that's a real life fact for you too. Nickel. If I had a nickel for every time we assaulted a nightclub, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. Exactly. Hey. So that's the map. So that off to the left, now room number two is uh, the coat check and weapons check. And then there is, of course, that uh, wave that wraps around to the right side. Uh, and then the door onto the left there, uh, the like, little sign next to room number three, says like security office. So. Hmm. Alright, in that case, I think I will, you know, pass by without giving up when I conceal the weapon. And, uh, enter the clip room. Alrighty. In that case, I have to roll a dice. Do 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 do. Bam. Okay, I should actually, this is important to know. Are you going to. Would you have been wearing, uh, the, like, rubber lined. Clothes that uh, Dapper gave you a while back. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That is important because uh, a building like this has weapon scanners. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
so you do pass through, uh, and the alarms don't blare, you don't get swatted by the bouncer bot. Um, and you enter into the main room of the nightclub, that being room 5A through E. Uh, and this huge open dance floor. Um, it's like a huge, like, uh, hologram like display in the center of the, of the dance floor, putting on, like, you know, music videos, basically. And then other points in the room are other holograms are basically, like, skatably clad women uh, dancing in, like, gibbet cages, which is kind of super edgy, but, like, whatever. You guys didn't look at the clip beforehand, so you don't know why this place has this kind of weird goth aesthetic, but... Whatever. Um, you're lost. Uh, so yes, this is, you know, most of the lights here are red or black, and the walls are all dark crimson and black and gold, and it's kind of kind of ostentatious, a little bit gaudy, uh, and super, super edgy. It kind of it reminds you of that, like, opening scene in the first Blade movie with uh, the, the blood party with the vampires, but, like, there isn't any blood. Or vampires, so you can see. But it's a kind of similar, like, 90s grunge aesthetic. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Cool. Next, I think I'm going to. I think just do quick sleep of the place. Uh, well, I do have a question. Number seven on the map. What is that place? Number seven are uh, a collection of legend like private rooms. Hmm. Like, uh, like. What's the what's the word I'm looking for? Like you know when like strip clubs would have like the, the lap dance rooms the cordon off from the rest of the main area. Mm. That's pretty much mm -hmm. what these places are. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, next. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Okay. Uh, I suppose then I shall walk up to the bar, you know, take a look around, get myself a drink, find a seat somewhere so I can do uh, some surveying. Alright. Uh, cool, yeah, so you walk up, get yourself a drink. All of the food and drink here is super. Uh, weirdly named. It's all named after like, uh, uh, like blood, like Bloody Marys, and, and you know, weird, like, pun names based on, like, oh, blood bags, and you know, uh, uh, IVs, and you know, blood type names, and all that weird stuff. Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, you can, we're gonna look around, uh, looking for anything specific. Uh, yes. I'm looking for, um, people who seem to be, like, crescent, like, gang members, and the guys we saw on the th surveillance tapes in particular. Okay, give me a perception check. Five. All right. So you have a look around, um, and you figure um, that a lot of the guys, especially like the dudes that are sitting up in like area 5E, and that like raised platform of boots, um, and then also you see there are a lot of a lot of guys that, that seem to match the descript the vague description of uh, CC members that being uh, dudes with cropped hair, trench coats, and a black and red uniform. 
are also seem to be like walking uh, either up like past like through 6A and then off to the left there. Um, but there is of course that second bar. Uh, and then uh, yeah. So 5B and then they walk through 6A past 6D and then into like basically like the employee only room through that, I'm that back. door. Uh, and then you don't know uh, what's behind there. You do see all three guys uh, that were on the security tape, they kidnapped Crummel, and they are sitting at the other end of the bar from you. Oh. Alright, well I guess I'll send a message to the others to be like, um, our targets are here. Like, right here. Uh, I'll turn to the... Uh, uh, I'll turn to Vendetta and I'll come over um, uh, sub vocals. I'll be like, well, do we think this is actionable info? Hmm. I do still need access to the uh, electronics in this club, so. I think it should be fine. I don't think we want to assault this place on their terms. No, not immediately. And the element of surprise could give us some very, very large leeway. How far are you into the hacking? Uh, not at all. Oh. By this point. Well, I'm not sure at this point because we haven't gone through the hacking yet. Oh. Oh, it's just like, Oid walked in, I'm on the roof type shit? Yes. Yes. Mm, as, yeah. far as, as far as we know, uh, well, as far as I know, I haven't done anything yet. Oh, Ed, can you see their faces? Uh, actually, I can just throw up a live stream to one this of the computers. This is true. Yeah, so, uh, Oid cannot see the two guys' faces who aren't injured because their dermal implants are still, like, fully functioning. Um, but the dude that you, whose face you guys do know, Mr. Sartori, uh, you guys, or you, know, you can't see part of his face that's not that's still like we've got a big bandage over it now uh, from mm. where Cromwell like you know, cleaved his jaw off <laughs> but uh, yeah, also I think you know, you're up close to these, well, relatively like, uh, like 30 feet away from these dudes, uh, these, these three guys are even more built than you figured they were from the recordings um, and they have a significant amount of chrome in them Hmm. Uh, idea. Would my medical diagnostic suite work through video? Uh, let me read the specifics of that, and I'll tell you. I have an idea. What's your idea? If Boyd can get me in, and this is if, and I can get on cameras, I can time the power outage. So that when the power goes out, he can inject one of them with the serum to reject chrome. And then turn the power back on immediately, and then turn the power back off. And then we enter. Wait. What would be turning it back on and back off to first? Fear. Okay. It, it is literally just like, oh, he's dying now. Uh, they're like, oh, what's that noise? And he just... As this man is having all of his cybernetics rejected from his body. As he should. Um, but, uh... Um... Okay. So... Does this sound like an acceptable plan to all part? Hmm. Also, yes, the Ben with Diagnostic Suite would work through camera. To, to a point. It wouldn't work as well, but it would still mostly function. Also, when you mean more chrome than the cameras let on, well, what do we technically see that's new? Um, what, that. can you, what, what can Oid see? Oid can see they, have, they each have two bionic arms and bionic jaws. Oh. 
Can I tell the specifics with my uh, sweet? So he has two uh, bionic eyes and two bionic arms? What, like, the enemy type looks two like? arms and a jaw. Oh. Uh, the character art for the enemy type doesn't technically cover all the stuff that they have. These guys are like specific instances of a wider like archetype of enemy. But mm -hmm. uh, the overall enemy type are called Moonlighters. Oh no. Uh, and they are, I was afraid of this. Uh, strong. I was afraid of this. Really now? You guys did yeah. research like you were supposed to, and you wouldn't know this. I feel like I know what you're alluding to, I'm just not going to say anything. I think out of character. I, I have an idea of what you're alluding to. Game chat. And then... Go. Oh! <laughs> oh dear! Jeez. Yeah. Oh dear. That's kind of scary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what you you're right. Um, and they are pretty. Uh, well, they're the, the the generic template is really good, which means you get what you see. Um, so the upgrades you can see are the upgrades you can tell they have. Uh, but these guys do have some additional. So they stuff. beat their schmeet with their right arm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell, brother? What in the hell? Damn. What? Hey, size are they? Some going on. <laughs> I have a weird weight disposition considering the abnormalities between the two arms. I feel like I know what's going on here. What's that, Alex? Probably have weird weight distribution because of the weird way that they they did their arms. Yeah, but One they do have stuff to balance that. Out, don't you worry. It's considerably smaller. Yeah, I mean, if Oi gets closer, he can he can see why they don't have such an obvious like they're not like leaning <laughs> to, to their right side all the time, uh, but, and there's a reason for that. But you can't see why. Besides, God. they are all built like telephone poles. Pretty sure it's <laughs> skeleton, like I'm a putting it lightly, or a bionic spine would probably uh, just balance the weight for you. I'd say, I'd say, uh, Isn't making there, them reject uh, their chrome would be a suffice punishment. Isn't there, um, much That would story? be extremely violent. There's an upgrade for one of the body parts where you have something that auto-balances you. Yeah. Well, for, like, that's for, uh, weapons. Being knocked prone and stuff. Oh, well, that mm. too. And then there's the internal gyroscopes for shooting guns to keep them level, yeah. I can imagine they have something similar to that. But, uh... Well, all huh. three of them look vaguely like that. Um, all these three guys have nicer jackets. <laughs> and, like, nicer <laughs> clothes but then uh, the character right shows. Hmm. Damn. I can see why uh, three of them and a surprise attack at night would, uh, get Cromwell. Okay. Alright. This pains me. Oh. Okay. Well, in that case... I guess what I'm gonna do is well. Firstly, I'd like to know uh, room number nine. Does that the doorway into there have any like uh, special things going on? Uh, the doorway into nine from like six A and six D. From where I'm at the bar. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, so that door does have a camera watching it, and it would have a, uh, like, electronic ID reader. Alright. And then, the, uh, number seven, the private room, uh, 
Uh, I guess I'll try and like observe someone going in or out of it. Okay, what are you trying to learn from that information? You know, I just want to see the uh, the goods, you know, because I'm going to enter there shortly. I want to, you know, conserve my time, not, you know, spend 10 minutes bumbling around trying to find one of the strippers to go get the dance from. Okay, I mean, the, these rooms aren't just, like, uh, lap dance rooms. Uh, you see that some uh, groups of, like, uh, Crescent guys uh, will go in here, presumably to, like, have private conversations and stuff like that, away from uh, the prying ears and eyes of other club goers. Um, some people go in here to, uh, like, watch, like, videos or hologram programs, because the uh, walls have uh, terminals in them. Stuff like that. They're not only used. Also, people going here to go in there to do drugs. That's <laughs> that's another uh, very popular use. But yeah, it's not just uh, you know banging. Okay. Um, well, in that case, uh, I'm going to do a bit of a funny move, and I'm going to walk right up to the guy with the the bandage face. Um. I'm going to look him up and down, like, very visibly, and then I'm going to whistle and walk away. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you just walk up to him very visibly, look look him up and down. Uh, uh, do you, like, cat call whistle him, you know? Wolf whistle him? Oh, of course. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't... I guess I have to roll a bug check or something to see if this guy's gay or not. <laughs> I mean... Did you say what gender? Cause I don't I guess, know. I guess Oi could just like. I mean, if he needed to, he could duck into the bathroom and then change gender and then come back out. But bro, I mean, I don't really need to be banging this guy specifically. It's just uh, to get a closer look. Maybe give Alex the chance he needs to see what's up with those chrome pieces. Ah, okay. Well, if you wanted to do if that, 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 if that's why you were doing it, not doing it to like actually like draw his attention. Um, then I guess uh, Mr. Vendetta can give me a perception check at his plus one to glean some extra information on these guys' chrome. Copy. Nine plus one. Nine plus one. Okay, so. Uh, besides the obvious, they have two bionic arms and a bionic jaw, um, you do tell that they have the bionic sword in their uh, wanking arm, shall we say. Jeez. Um, their bionic jaws are upgraded with uh, respirators, so they're, they'll be immune to aerosolized poisons, gases, stuff like that. Uh, their left arms appear to be built for uh, speed. That's all I'm going to tell you about that. And their right arms appear to be built for heavy hitting um, and are also, of course, uh, much heavily armored. So their, their right arms, with the extra plating on them, look a lot like Bonus's bionic arms that also have, like, the expanded plating that gives you, like, extra HP. Um, so there's that. And then, with a closer look, I, you know, would, like, would have walked up to these guys from, like, their, like, their backs. Uh, they do all have bionic spines. Don't know what upgrades they have for those bionic spines, but no matter what they are, it's bad juju. Bionic spines are very powerful upgrades. <laughs> Um, I would know. Yeah, and uh, their muscles and their like the the, the gannic part of their bodies uh, doesn't look natural. Like these guys look roided out. Even you know moving past the whole chrome arms thing. Oh, great. Oh, and also, I think it's, I forget which palm it is, but one of their palms has, like, a weird, um, like, surface to it. You don't know what they do, but it, it, it doesn't look normal. Don't get grabbed. Oh, actually, I also forgot to mention, I still his face when I walk up to him. <laughs> that was the other point of that. Well, you can only see part of his face, but, Yeah. But I guess, but I guess you could, 
we could just choose to like copy his whole face and just replicate like the digitization, <laughs> which would be really weird. But I guess he could do it. I mean, I've always wondered: can he? Uh, what's the word? Copy the pattern of the ink and have it actually work. Well, I guess he he could copy the like uh, pixelated effect of it. Hmm. That's it, cursed. I, I'm always yeah. thinking. I'm like, well, he either has a pixelated head, or there's a way to know what the ink looks like without it activating. He's like, oh, so people with normal eyes see the ink, and everyone else doesn't. Because uh, actually, you know, uh -huh. speaking of me and uh, seeing ink. I do have a uh, project I want to get started on after we complete this mission. Hmm. Oh, weird. Mm-hmm. All right. Remind me about that. But yeah, you think you could do that? Because people with normal eyes would really be questioning whether they took something <laughs> or not. They would see a man walking around yeah, no matter with a pixelated what, I mean, face. Have, that would be kind of weird. I don't... I mean, theoretically, you could. there probably could be an implant to induce that kind of an effect in normal people, but it wouldn't look like pixels. It would look like smudges or like blur but like into like an optical illusion in like organic eyes but that also wouldn't work on cyber eyes so it you know it, it kind of defeats weird. the purpose yeah. yeah um i guess if you're going to like a bunch of hillbillies that definitely don't have cyberware but at that point like you leave no one left alive so i yeah. mean i'm not sure that's even a valid point because hillbillies could absolutely have cyberware i think it's more poor people who don't have cyberware yeah you're right <laughs> This yeah, is bro. true. Hey, you saying that Hillbillies can't be wealthy enough to afford <laughs> artificial eyes? Nah, bro. They have to be so wealthy that they would harbor uh, specific children that have special powers. Now, have you know that Flavius used to be a homeless person? He used to be a what? hillbilly living out in the mountains of Appalachia? Bro. That's a lie. Best origin story. <laughs> <laughs> bro, Flavius' tragic backstory? <laughs> we do it for PR. Yeah, so uh, uh, is actually a murder his, robot? Like, uh, website bio says he grew up poor in like, the <laughs> Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's the information you get from there, uh, I'm pretty sure. Also, they all have uh, non concealed firearms on their persons, they have pistols on their hips. Mm, makes sense. Too poor to conceal them. <laughs> Probably not because they're in their own club or something. <laughs> yeah, this is, you know. Their boss their boss owns the people who own the club, so. But uh okay. Just don't get into melee with them. However, Two of us have uh, wonderful cutting weapons that could cut through their arms, so I'm really tempted to just disarm them, literally. <laughs> what are they going to do? Grab the sword? They could bite it. Uh, this is going to be great. But uh, that would, how I would can... that be any better? Because well, you, you, know, you, you don't just touch Titanite and then explode into chunks. You have to, like, unless they were to, like, headbutt the blade, they would be fine. <laughs> Thank God. You just cut their own heads open. Yeah, that's what well, I'm saying. Glad I have a titanite blade now, too. Yes. The whole party does, but except for Oid and at, the medic. The two medics yeah, don't, at the same don't time. have cool swords. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. Wow. At the same time, I definitely don't feel like getting that up I also to have, them. I also have a weapon that pierces armor. So oh, you studied see how this human goes. biology. I studied the blade. <laughs> Cairo, Cairo has just been amassing a small arsenal at this point. Yeah. It's not even that small, to be honest with you. No, it, it has grown quite large. All you're missing is a nice RPG. Yeah, honestly, I think that might be my next uh, acquisition. Hey, Dapper, can you buy me an RPG? Of course, Go pull on. Uh... Don't ask why. <laughs> I I could really go full uh what's the word? Uh Oh, what's the what's the word for it?
Anyway. Something. I don't know the word for it. There's a word for it, though. Yeah. There is, not there is, not there is. Um... Oh, I could go full Shia militant. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. Though... Who do we want alive? I'm assuming the guy with the messed up face. Yeah. Or no. All of their all their faces are messed up. Well, the the do no the, the one injured. with like the injured face. Yeah. Oh no, like I'm just that. saying they're ugly. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you don't, you don't even know what they look like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're just assuming and... that they're ugly, bro. They are ugly. The they're meat. ugly on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're ugly where it counts. Wow. I'm gonna tell them you said that. You should. Wow, you're going to break our team. cover with the fourth wall break? That's <laughs> fail RP. Excuse me, you're ugly. Uh, it shoots me in the face immediately. Oh, look, it, don't look ugly to you? Yes, gunshot. Uh, the viewers don't know about Morello. I do now. <gasps> oh, it goes up to the one, one of the guys. Do I look like a chump to you? Yes. Do I look Italian to you? Do I look Italian to you? Yes. Bang. Oh, that was racist. How dare you? How dare you? But yeah. I'm gonna have Hog with me as well. Just putting that out there. No, actually, yeah, you're banned at this from point. With you. Huh? You're banned from having Hog with you on any missions ever. Oh, that's too fucking bad because he's with me. Nope. He's, he's our mascot. <laughs> Bonus is the mascot. We all know that. Bro. Two mascots. <laughs> Bonus, do a backflip. We no, are literally the best could. team ever. Honk, do a backflip. Yeah, he did it better. Literally cracks the pavement underneath him. God. But yeah, what is the game plan with these guys? Besides the whole turn off the lights, turn them back on, turn them um, off again. Well, Oid's going to be injecting one of them with a chrome rejection serum. Can he do that both? To, to two people. Well, that's it. Well, we do only need one to stay alive. Yes. Hmm. And taking out two of them would be advantageous. So, actually, do you have any way to stun them, Oid? Do you have anything shocking on you B besides like your uh, massive wallet? That's very shocking. <laughs> well, uh, if, if we can incapacitate one and, you know, kill the two, I'm fine with it. These are Crimson Crescent members. I really don't care for their life. I mean, uh, yeah. The last one, after he tells us what we need to know, we're just going to cap him anyway. Yeah. Their lives really do not hold consequence to us. Ooh, I wonder if I can get money if I give their body to someone. Possibly. Yes. But if they reject their chrome, probably not. Well, uh, I was talking about the guy we need cap because I'm pretty sure rejecting chrome definitely ruins the chrome. I also yeah. could uh, steal it off. But it keeps him. the chrome intact, technically. Does it keep the chrome intact? Well, well if you can not probably be intact. No? Uh, oh. no? So, yeah. Uh, that's an yeah. easy repair. <laughs> also, I should remind you all that scaving chrome is considered like one of the most morally deplorable things you can do. Oh, yeah. well, I see. I wouldn't do. I'm not the one doing it. I was really going to see what LSSI would be thinking about of being like, oh, yeah, LSSI doesn't scav body. chrome either. <laughs> I don't know what they were going to do with the body. I was thinking less of scaving and more of like, I don't know. Someone wants a crimson crescent body. No. I don't know. Huh? Be weird like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you could find like some people, but I don't think there's like yeah. a dedicated market for that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, this is true. To, to necrophiles, my guy. Nah, this is true. This is true. Damn. Not actively, like, anyways. If you, if you even call up Dante Riddle, he might be able to find somebody for that sort of thing. But this is true. <laughs> but I don't know if they're like. Nah, we'll toss their body somewhere.
They have any, do they have cool weapons on them? Are those pistols they have on them cool? I mean, you know that they're silenced. Oh, wait, maybe they're like the same one? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. So, Cairo hacking? Doesn't have a port. Yeah, I gotta go do the, like, the Sigma Jig, you know? Yes. Oh, there's no port outside. Well, you, well, even even if you do the thing with Jay, you still have to find a port to plug into, like, period. Oh yeah, uh, is there not a port outside? Did we? Did you look for that? I wasn't there for any of that. So I was just. We haven't though. done our interaction points yet. <laughs> there won't be Damn. a plug outside anyway. I mean, I guess you could, like, if you desperately needed one, you could like dig a hole in the ground and, like, interface right into, like, the, the Ethernet cable under the floorboards. But... You unplugged the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cut their internet. Well, no, no we also Wi-Fi have that van. Customers. We <laughs> also have the van. The van, van is a huh? port, my guy. You gotta install one. Yeah, it's a separate upgrade. Yeah, I thought then... we took the um, van they were using for drones. No. They took the crash cart. No, we... We do have a van. A vandalism van. This is that has the true. port. Oh, yeah, but you didn't take the vandalism van. Hold on. It doesn't have the port in it either. No, it does not. Damn. Yes. Yeah. Actually, that's not the same van. It has barely any upgrades on it. Yeah. So you just haven't upgraded the crime car or the vandalism van like at all. Yes. We upgraded ourselves first. We we want to keep our cars protected for a bit and then upgrade them. You know. Yeah. But uh yes. Uh or is there a business next door? Uh well there is cuz there's like a hole in the wall nightclub. There are, like it's you know got to walk down the the alleyway to get to the entrance. Um and it's like 60 feet like indented in from the sidewalk in the street. Yeah. Uh on either side of it are two apartment blocks. Hmm. Well, if it's inside of a building uh, and they did they have a possibility of finding the buildings port? What? You said did the building they, have a port. What yeah. building? The hole in the wall, or is the whole place its own club? Because I was thinking it similarly to the condemned. Uh, well, the hole in the wall would have a port inside somewhere. Yeah. Would have multiple Damn it. Pain well, I can go inside then. If anything, and Ven- if Vendetta wants to come with me, I mean, I mean can come. if you want, I could look upstairs for one as well. This is true. Yeah. So who who going first for investigating for a port? Good question. All right. All right, all right, my wonderful DM. Who who do you want to to go down the route for investigating a port? Who would who would turn one up first in the most likely scenario? I mean, because the building only has a couple of floors above ground, um, and there wouldn't be a port outside, like on the roof or anything. Um, only because a club built by the Crescent, owned by the Crescent, wouldn't have as uh, glaring a security uh, hole as putting like the you know center of their <laughs> like matrix security uh, attached to like a random transformer or AC vent on the roof um, you would have to go inside or you could like go into a different building and project into a port there or you know uh, I'll go uh, I'll go in what I'll do is I'll go into the apartment next door and be like hey, I just need a port Really quick. I just got to do something. Okay. Uh, you walk into uh, the apartment next door, um, and there's a security guard behind the desk, because, again, this is a building across the street from a prison, so it does have extra security. Um, and you're like, don't need to use a port, and the guy's like, uh, Lamau? I mean, I'm not going to let you do that, because that's, like, you know, a breach of security. Uh, but... I mean, do you know any of the tenants in the building? Or, like, you know, I don't know. And I make a deception check. 
and, and say oh, yes, actually, I do I know look... the man in this building. Uh... Jeremy Johnson the third. Yeah, I'd like to make a deception check. Oh my god. Yeah, charisma check at disadvantage. Deal. Gonna, Got gonna, yourself a deal, friend. I think there is perhaps a better way to do this. Maybe not hit like on an instant, but it's a nine and a seven, sir. So a seven. All right. What's your charisma? My charisma. I think it's a six or a five. Let's see. Your charisma is. Is he that seven. guy? Oh, okay. yeah, higher so than you, I expected. You do beat this guy. <laughs> Uh, his, your, your, you do lie better than he can intuit you, but only barely. He also rolled a seven, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, yes, okay. So you're like, yeah, I know a guy in this building. It's it's uh, Gilbert Godfrey the thirty fourth on floor sixty two. Uh, you're really milking that theme. <laughs> like oh, like yeah, I guess that's a nickname for somebody or something. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you can, like, convince him to let you use the port in his apartment, then feel free. But, like, I can't give you access to, like, Sick. the security room's port. Uh, that's fine. I don't need the access to your security rooms anyway. I just need a port in general. Like, all right, well, yeah, convince a tenant, I guess. All right, can I go up? Sure. Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> I like... If this was open comms, you, just just internally, I'm like, I don't think the buildings around here have 62 floors. I know. That's why I'm amazed it worked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you get the feeling the security guard doesn't actually care very much, and he just doesn't want to like get you let, let like let you hack into the building right off the bat by giving him access to the That's security fine. room. So That's fine. Like, yeah, whatever. As long as uh, how there, many floors there. does this building have? 61. No. Uh, 61. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably only, only like 10 or 15. All right, I'll go to the second floor. <laughs> okay, so you just get in the elevator, hit two, go up one floor. I'm assuming floor Vendetta's floor. with me. Yeah. Okay, sure. Um, Vendetta, are you, are you visibly armed? Because your SMG isn't discreet, so you just have to be packing heat. Walking well, into this... Both of us are. Both of us are, because I've got the, I've got the stendo on me. Look, bro, are you really gonna question me? <laughs> I mean, I think if you both walked in, the security guard would definitely like put his hand on his gun, but I don't think he would like. This is still K four. People, you know, everybody's pro two ways in, in in main K four. Uh, so you think he, you think he wouldn't care? But I think he'd definitely still be a little bit more suspicious <laughs> if you if you both walked in, you know. Because pistols nobody really cares about, but uh, but then it carries a long gun. With the extendo mag. Yeah. yeah. The guy's just like, what the fuck? Well, the thing is about my guns, all of them are, well, not all of them, but some of them are registered. Well, not if you can tell that they're registered or not. Oh, well. He just assumes registered like goons. Does he say anything to me? Big security guard? No. Yeah. Okay. No, he doesn't care enough. Yeah. He's All right. Like, yeah, as long as you guys get somebody, let's let you do it. I don't really care. Uh, yeah. See, kind gentleman. Yeah. He's like, but also don't kill anybody while you're in here, or else I will have no choice uh, but to call the police and leave. Don't wait, wait, worry. Wait, no one wait, in wait. here is gonna die. All right, then break a leg, buddy. Yeah. I mean, it depends on whose leg it's going to be. Let's just go to the second floor, man. All right, then. All right. So you go to the second floor. It's a hallway with doors. All right. Uh, I'll go to the end of the hallway and uh, see if I can get someone down there that's at least close enough to the club. These are doors, Cairo. Yeah, I know. They're ugly doors. I don't like them. Duly noted. Alright, uh, let's knock on a door. Okay, so you go and knock on a door, 
in like a, 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 I don't know a, a young woman answers the door and he's like uh yeah who are you uh we're here to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> God, no. Uh, no, uh, hey, uh, neighbor from down the hall, would I be able to borrow your port really quick? Uh, give me a charisma check. Okay. The eight. Okay, uh, she's like, uh, yeah, sure, we give me 50 collars for it. Yeah, fine. Okay. All right. Worth fine. It. She's like, all right, then. And then she just lets you inside. Cool. Uh, nice place you got here. And then I'll immediately like, just check in. The place is actually a guard dump, by the way. Like, this woman is obviously either a gangster of some kind or, like, a drug addict. <laughs> Damn, bitch, oh. you live like this? <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> oh god just insult her as soon as you get in <laughs> <laughs> you live like this oh that's it get out <laughs> god no more deal no refunds it was a joke sure Hakuna Vitatas <laughs> Vitatas yeah so you give the woman right, yeah. three collars and she lets you use uh her Matrix port. Nice. Ah, uh-huh, euphemism. You wouldn't happen to have any coffee, would you? Uh, she just flips you off. Well, well, how how polite. Uh, she just, <sighs> like, plops down on her couch and, like, puts, uh, like, a, a pair of VR goggles uh, over her eyes and then uh, begins playing the sound of, like, VR porn over, like, the, the apartment speakers. What the fuck? I'll come over sub vocals in <laughs> the Matrix and I'll be like, why do I hear porn? She's playing <laughs> porn. Then, uh, are you watching porn? No, she's playing no, porn. I, uh, dude, tell me right now if you're fucking with me. Are you watching porn right now? No, I'm watching someone watch porn. Uh, uh, why do I find <laughs> that as very hard to channel on YouTube? <laughs> In some circumstances, I think that's wait, more weird. Wait, you're watching a React channel to someone reacting to porn? I, I'll be honest. I feel like that's what the woman is doing right now. She's live streaming herself, reacting to porn. <laughs> yeah, so I got this weird Wait, actually, my apartment. imagine a live stream of a YouTube video reacting to a porn video. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> we go deeper. There are more layers. Yeah. <laughs> so I got this weirdo in my apartment right now. Sorry, guys. I'm back to the stream. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you wait until we leave, please? I think because Miss? you're in the Matrix, Kara, you would you would enter the Matrix and you would just see her avatar, like, in like a, a different part of the apartment, just just watching that. Can you not, please? Can you not? In real please. time, yeah, she purposely God. put her avatar next to her. She's like self aware of her own um, avatar. She's she's a VTuber and uh like you just see me walk behind her. <laughs> you're just, you're just in, in like a matrix VTuber you just see Cairo walk past like quickly like speed walk past the camera. Oh god that's so cursed. Oh does that mean she's not she's not connected via Jack, she's connected via um right, via VR headset. Yeah, so she just turns around and be like Oh. <laughs> she, my name, guys, is just a weirdo. Uh, like, oh my god, you have a boyfriend? I'm leaving. I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm your boyfriend. I'm canceling my tier three subscription. All of you should unsubscribe right now. I'm just I that guy. Probably, I could probably hijack this stream, but I don't think I want to. <laughs> we have other pressing matters to do besides ruining. Pressing matters. Besides ruining a Did point react know? channel. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> Help myself to her coffee. <laughs> she does not have coffee. She does, however, have synth coke in the uh, coffee tin. Is right, it always synth, synth coke, though? She has synth uh, no, coke this, this coffee. Is, this is Crimson Crescent brand synth coke. Uh, why is there synth coke in your coffee pot? And she like, it's like, bro, I'm streaming right now. Could you not? 
Please sorry. You're the one who has two boyfriends unsubscribing. Tier <laughs> three unsubscribing. Sorry, chat. My uh, two boyfriends, two weed smoking boyfriends, are uh, interrupting my stream. I do not smoke leaf. <laughs> you didn't deny that you're not a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, anyway. fucking Vendetta's first contact? Ow, this is an awfully <laughs> hot Jim Coke coffee pot. <laughs> I'm just imagining it. Awfully up. hot Coke coffee pot. <laughs> awfully hot cocaine? Oh my god. God, she goes over her own video. She's like, by the way, so my boyfriend won. This is how he did me. And I'm just like, why? Caro. Caro. Caro gets into the stream with a. Like, he's not present in stream, but uh, his voice comes through. He's like, uh, I have no affiliation to this woman. She's uh, literally a psychopath. She doesn't cut her toenails. <laughs> He's like, uh, well, you might be able to find that out if you were to subscribe to my uh, only crabs. She has she only crabs. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason it's called gonorrhea chat, and it's not because it's gone in a few days. This poor woman making it you, a can living. You, can you please? Can you please just wait? Can you please stop watching porn in my presence? Like, hey man, it's not my fault you guys interrupted me, okay? That's a you problem. You can. We gave you fifty dollars. Right? Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently present and awaiting Oid to put it back door so I can hack into this bar. Uh, this is what I have to deal with until you're done. Actually, now that I think about it, if you're Cross hacking. This is just out of character, not in character. But if you're cross hacking, you're going to a different mainframe. I'm mm -hmm. not so sure how easy it is for you to catch a line directly to it. Because the, well, that's why I made the USB. Universal, uh, universal thing. It's like the internet, basically, where like it's everywhere all at once. You don't need to be like near a router. To, well, I guess you you need to be in a port to use the matrix, but the matrix covers. Like a 3D map of the whole world. No, yeah. I know that, but remember last time, like, he needs to forcefully break in, but I yeah, guess yeah, if Void... Well, that's the chat. point. Yeah. That's the point of me having yeah. this USB, yeah. is so I can get in, yeah. make the check, yeah. and then I'm... Initial firewall. Exactly, because I've been given access. Yeah, so I guess at that point, while uh, Vendetta tends to bicker with this woman reacting to illicit content on the internet, uh, in VR for some odd reason, ultra VTuber experience, uh, we hard cut back to Oid, who is uh, continuing to eye up uh, Sartori and his two buff friends. Oh yeah, I think I would have listed uh, the, the modifications up for Oid. Okay. Good to And uh once I'm done, you know, getting the the goods, uh I think I'm going to attempt to secure a one of those pirate rooms. Okay. Uh you rent them by the minute. What? Okay. Yeah. I mean you only need like a minute or two. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? How much is it? Oh, uh, well, yeah, what's the rate? Uh, 87,000 colors per minute. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, doable. <laughs> I can be here for like five minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what we'd spend all God. the money on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all finally come down to this. Everything has become clear. I am unfettered in my goal. I know what I must do, but I'm not is sure it, if I have the strength to do it. He's a tier 3 scrub, uh, scrub, scrub. He's a tier 3 sub on this woman's stream, that's what he is. <laughs> uh, Cairo, Cairo comes over, uh, sub vocals be like, oh, Actually, wait, I just had a really You know what you thought. need to do. <laughs> yeah, so the robot has a trust fund. Bro? What's your, what's your plan? He has stocks and only crabs. <laughs> Is it actually 87? No, it's like five colors per minute. <laughs> oh, that's not that bad. <laughs> that's not that bad. Well, in any case, 
uh, I go, I, I rent a room. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll get it for like 10 minutes or so. Um, and I'll walk up into this room and I will uh, see what's inside. Any security here? Uh, there is. There are no cameras. There, there, there is a terminal against the far wall. Um, like you know, like you like scan like your credit card or whatever, and then use AR to like you know send the money over. And then like the door slides open, and then you walk inside. It closes behind you, and like a little like chimey voice is like, "Welcome." And then you know, like the terminal lights up and stuff. And because this is of course K four, you would figure also because you're like a robot that came from like the the technophile dystopia company you know that most companies can listen in via any kind of device um that you have like period anything they will listen to uh so the terminal being here means that should there are any cameras that the bar can listen to but the mega corporations will hear what you say but you don't really care i don't think um but you know other than that there's no like obvious like you know CCTV camera staring you down. Don't see any microphones anywhere. There's just like the terminal. Uh, then there is the like the, the cushioned chairs on either side of the room. And then in the middle is a uh, strip pole on a little table. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna walk up to this terminal and I'm going to uh, give it a quick once over. Uh, I assume it's like, you know, fairly standard, inexpensive equipment. Yeah, uh, these things are kind of designed with the expectation that, like, drunk and high people are going to be messing with them. Um, so they're, they're, they're built to be kind of cheap, but, but as sturdy as you can get for cheap. Uh, so that there's no, like, obvious, like, ports in them. But you figure if you, like, cracked the side of it open or whatever and rummaged around in the wires long enough, you would find something that would work. All right. Well, I think just to uh, bring it full circle, I'm going to um, uh, put on, you know, something on the terminal. I'm going to play, like, the, the stream of that <laughs> girl <laughs> through Cairo. <laughs> Are messing with right now. God, a damn tier three sub. Oh, it's yeah. actually a tier three sub. Actually, he pays eighty six thousand. Yeah, I like a to... month to that one. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't understand my methods. God, my motivations are beyond your mortal understanding. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And so um, I, I turn around the stream, and then I'm going to um, look around the back of this. I think I'm going to try and see if I can pry this away. All right, give me, uh, give me an intelligence check if you want to be clever about it, or a strength check if you just want to rip this terminal off the wall. I'll opt for intelligence. Yeah, um, I got a four on the die. I think that still passes because you're a smart boy. Um, so, like you're dumb as a brick. Yeah, so you uh, you, you manage to like work your your tinkly metal hands along like the side of like the plastic casing, like it attaches it to the wall, and you kind of find a place with like a little gap from somebody, you know, damaging it in the past with a crack or something, and you like break part of it away, and you see that like in like. Behind this, like, the LCD screen, the, the touch screen on the terminal, um, there's, like, a bunch of, like, wires and, like, ports and stuff for, like, maintenance and things like that. Um, and one of them, of course, is a, a Matrix port, uh, but also, like, a USB is in here, too. Also, there's an aux port here, if you, in case you wanted to blast some of uh, Bonus's playlists uh, for the club. Mm. Um, but, yeah, you, you can plug the drive in if you wanted. Bottle cool. full of bub. I will plug the drive into here. All right. And I assume Cairo gets some kind of notification. Yeah. You get like a AI notification of like you've got mail. Also, I'm gonna to make it even more facetious. I'm gonna like take a selfie 
in front of like the terminal playing the stream of this person <laughs> reacting to the reaction to the porn video. I'm gonna send it to the boys. Bro? Send, send, send to the, 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 the mercenary team group chat a selfie of Oid as random citizen 872 in front of a terminal playing the stream of the woman reacting to someone reacting to her reacting to porn with Cairo in the background. Just kind of looking on stunned. I can't tell you how violently confused I am right now. <laughs> I'm in that video. Uh, I'm not <sighs> in the video. in the video. Bro? You're, 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 she would be, like, because she's in VR, they would only be able to hear you talk to her and would be able to see you. Uh. Actually, uh, I'm going to do something even more. I'm going to, like, create uh, a new, like, whatever the Twitter equivalent is, account. Um, with, like, a an alt email account I have, and then I'm just gonna, like, post this picture with the caption, I can't believe my favorite streamer, who I paid thousands of callers to, has not one, but two recent boyfriends. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> one of them is knocked out on the floor, connected to a port. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even surprised. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Immediately, uh, Oid's scuffed uh, alt email tweet begins to rack up like uh, a couple dozen likes and, and, and reposts. Uh, and people are outraged that this mediocre, popular streamer, uh, who's, who's on like the 12th layer of the React meta, is, uh, does in fact have two weed smoking boyfriends. A modern uh, streaming drama case. This one right here. <sighs> it's a good thing I have a facial implant. Yeah, so I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, what the stream would see is like this woman reacting in VR to this porn because it's she's in VR. She could like walk around. It's like it's like a full like the scene is three D for you, and and for, and for for her and for Kyra because Kyra's in the Matrix with her. So it's, it's, it's like a full like set like a porn set and she's just like walking around three like full 360 and like getting in super close and like examining everything reacting to like little details and bits and bobs and like analyzing this like a full intellectual analyzes a poem uh i would know i'd do that <laughs> so i haven't oh and then, like, no she probably would have like a weird like like you know how like in in like 3d system like mono software like blender and stuff you can put a camera in the 3D space. She's got she's got one of those in the Matrix that she's like holding on like a selfie stick and maneuvering around. So the, the, they just catch glimpses of Cairo standing in the empty Matrix like wireframe void <laughs> behind her in the distance, on like the fourth wall. Um, and then at one point, as she's walking around, uh, complaining about Cairo's presence. She like turns the camera to face Cairo, and she's looking at him, and like she like starts to taunt you, and then you get the notification that like the USB has been plugged in, so you get slurped out of like <laughs> you get and disappear, and she's like, "Huh, well he's gone now. That's nice." And then I've just, ordered a pizza to your address in your name. What was that? I have ordered a pizza to your address in your name. Like, as long as you eat it and pay for it. I'm not. Suck be dry. You have to pay me extra for that. Good and hard through my jorts. You're wearing jorts? Oh my <laughs> god, she's wearing jorts. <laughs> Full on booty shorts, bro. Literally Cairo right now. <laughs> Can't believe you actually live like this. <laughs> Yeah, who who casually sits in their own apartment in in booty shorts, bro? That's kind of cringe. Finally, I'm out of this conversation. <laughs> Cairo, help me, God, please. <laughs> this has been no Fox response from the lifeless husk. In cold blood. <laughs> Machine guns are down. You all see, you all saw it. Her second boyfriend, her third boyfriend, gunned her down. <laughs> her, third, her third weed smoking boyfriend murders local streamer. On live on air. <laughs> That's it. I'm 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 checking. A tragic case of domestic violence. 
What does my medical diagno no, the diagnostic suite tell me about this woman's health condition? Horny. Excuse me? <laughs> Did I stutter? <laughs> Anyway, I hate this. I hate everything about this. Uh, so, Cairo, you would get slurped via the data stream or whatever other basic 90s matrix word you want to use for that. Uh, and you appear, having teleported into a different network, uh, and you're in the, the, like, the matrix equivalent of this private room in uh, the Golden Artery. And this private room... Um, doesn't have any matrix security, no matrix guards in here. Uh, you know, there is, a, there is a node in here, I guess, for the terminal that is in the wall. If you wanted to, like, screw with that and, like, you know, turn off the stream <laughs> so Ord can't watch that moment any anymore. I'll let him have his artificial fun. <laughs> All of his fun artificial fun. Um, I'd like to use Starfinder. Okay. All right. What do you got me rolling here? Uh, Starfinder is uh, no check. Oh, cool. For you. So see, scan systems and environment of the network in which the hacker currently resides. The hacker rolls a hack check. The hacker, are you see, okay, so you see, you roll one d ten. And then you learn information if room sizes, if enemies are present in a room but not enemy type, presence of modules, what type of modules for root access, etc. For a number of root, you go to half of your intelligence stat number. If this program encounters a password, firewall, or other obstruction that has a hack DC dice with a maximum higher than the number rolled by the hacker at the beginning, and this program cannot look past the obstruction and stops it. Alright. Alright. Let's see, let's roll that 1d10. Uh, nine. Oh boy. All right. Uh, cool. So you. Let's see. Half. Half of your intelligence stat number rounded down. Do 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 banana bus. Half your intelligence stat <laughs> number rounded down would be four. It's my intelligence eight. So four rooms from. Like four room radius, basically away from this room. So you would see into six A. You'd see into six B. You'd see into five A. You'd see into five E, five B, five D, five C, two one, the fours, uh, which don't have any real matrix connection to them. Um, you wouldn't be able mm. to get into room three or see into room three because that has a, a higher firewall. Um, you would be able to see into room 9, but oh, not no. room 10. You'd see into 6C, but not 8A or 8B. And you would be able to see okay. into 6D and, yeah, and 6E. And you see All right. the entire building, <laughs> minus, uh, like, the VIP room and uh, the security office. Uh, can I tell which one is the security office? Well, the one with, like, the, the super high firewall is probably the security office. Alright, well, that's where I'd assume I'm going. Alrighty. Uh, so the, the matrix of this building is just, you know, the standard replica of the, the normal building. Um, I don't think there'd be matrix guards... I think they probably be That's more concentrated good. towards the front of the building and then the important areas in the back. So yeah, so you can approach uh, row 3. This has a 1d12 DC difficulty. Alright, so I've got a what, 10? Yes, yeah, so you roll 1d10, I roll 1d12, whoever rolls higher wins. Alright. Oh, it's... I still got a good chance. I hope the they rolled high. I rolled a 4. I got a 10. Okay. Oh. So this super difficult uh, firewall, probably one of the highest you've encountered ever, I'm pretty, uh, pretty sure. Um, one of these was very rare. Uh, and you, you beat it easily. Bam. 
Dismantle it. Literally just <laughs> mauled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there would be a couple of Matrix guards in this room. They would be Which a kind? siren, which is the annoying kind that uh, sets off alarms. And then there would be. Da -da 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 -da. Let me double check my hacking rules. I want to make sure I know. I don't, I don't remember what. I don't think you have the lock picks. So yeah, that. Yeah. So if you had failed that, that would have been very bad for you. Good. I didn't fail, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, scrolling all the way down. My big old rule book, Doc. God, there are so many modifications. There really is so many, isn't there? My God. I'm only on vehicle modifications. Oh boy. Okay, so. Uh, let's look at three section. Player book rules, yada yada yada, yada yada yada, yada yada yada. Magic. K4, okay. So. Gonna just go past the fame classes, of course. The mech. So right. combat hasn't started yet, right? No. So, uh, we're in access. Yada yada. Matrix guards. Okay. So there would be, besides the siren, probably uh, a, a hellhound guard as well. Ah, uh, okay. Nothing I haven't faced before. No. Um. Fist of Rock can freeze them, right? Oh, okay, program. Fist of Rock, some reason it freeze entirely. Oh, that would freeze the entire network. Not them, though? Uh, well, they, they would be included, but you wouldn't be able to do anything either. Oh. It would freeze everything. Including myself? Well, it wouldn't freeze you, but it would freeze all of, like, the modules. You wouldn't be able to interact with anything. I'm back. Why are we freezing? Mm, okay. Like you, you can still You're around, nuts, but, buddy. Like, you know, do anything. Hmm. I can't stealth my way through this, can I? I mean, what, uh, what's the situation? Uh, I've got two Matrix guards inside, and if I don't kill one of them on the first turn, I'm probably gonna get an alarm raised. Well, the, um... like the Hellhound can't raise the alarm, but the siren. No, can. but the siren can. Do you have any... I forgot what it was. Programs? Yes. There's a specific program that I freezes the entire cards. Yes, I literally have one to freeze the entire matrix. Yeah, he freezes the whole network, but he can't oh. freeze well, like individual. Yeah, it, it was specific to yeah matrix cards. Okay. If I you can burst down the siren. <laughs> you, you do have a decent chance to, to insta-schwack the siren. Well, I've got to use Fry 2. Yeah, yeah. If you Fry, yeah. If you use Fry 3, that I would mean... still... There's a decent chance that... Uh, you'll, you'll... Siren goes whack. down? Yeah, and just whack the Siren and then worry about the dog yeah. after. Because, like you said, only Sirens... Only specific ones, like the Siren, can raise alarms. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the plan anyway, if I couldn't get past them by any other means. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and Fry her. Alright, so uh, give me that perception check. Fire the... Alright. Uh, fireball or be a light or whatever you want to... A hey, seven. seven. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be a snap. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, give me your arrow damage. You can't dodge this. Ah, uh, sick. Uh, that's 1d100, 2d100. Alright. This is a surprise round, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's uh, 90 and 100. Oh my lord. Almost max, yeah. Uh, you instantly immolate this siren. Uh, and she uh, 
uh, incinerates in a cloud of pixels. Uh, then I get a chance to alert the network. Um, I actually, I, I have a new idea for handling uh, alarms. Actually, I'm probably gonna work on that between the streams if I have the time. Anyway, that'll be for next time. Um, yes, yeah, so then up next is Rolling Initiative. Right. Uh, and I believe Initiative is the same as it is. A five. Uh, and then there, there is. Uh, which is combat. Yes, yeah, second wiring, add their full to Initiative. Have it. Okay, yeah. So you get a five plus whatever your initiative or your agility is and then uh agility of five so i've got ten all right all right okay and then the centaur i thought it was a cerberus oh, no, the hellhound yeah hellhound you very poorly. You, said, you said centaur and i was like wait a minute <laughs> the, or the the dps will actually kill you um <laughs> Yeah. In a group, yeah. probably. You got a nine in total. So you go first, albeit fairly. And you have three By one. Mind. Can I fry him three times? Uh, you can, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's hit it. Okay. You can. Uh, let me double check. Uh, yeah, you can. No cooldown. Sick. <laughs> I'm just snapping violently at this dog. <laughs> Fuck! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry! Up. Uh, that's a seven on my first. Seven. Yep, that passes. That's an eight on my second. Okay. And a six. Eight, six. And it also sucks the seed. So give me though that sixty one hundred damage. Yep. All right. Hounds do have digital armor, so you might negate some of this, but. He will save his own life entirely. Four, five, six. All right, first one, 40. 40, okay. Well, uh, that's total, by the way. Um, second one, 140. Okay. And the last one is a 50 and an 80. 800. <laughs> 310 damage for armor checks in total. He passed none of those. Hilarious. Uh, yeah. So you instantly, well, not instantly, so you uh, take each action. And on the third one, you manage to just barely, uh, well, just barely do kill him by a decent margin. Uh, but you incinerate this hellhound, um, and like, as you snap the third time, like a, a pixelated like portal of fire opens up beneath the hellhound's feet, and it falls into the portal, and it closes again. I want to point out this is this isn't like normal snapping, like this is this is like Colonel Mustang when he's like incinerating. Oh yeah, a big character by the way. Uh, cool. So combat's over. Cards anyway, no alarm has been raised. Uh, although the system I have in my mind, that won't be the case. But I have to actually like f make proper hacking rules still, so <laughs> that will come later. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you there have the uh, access to the security room. There will be a few nodes in here: nodes for the security cameras, nodes for the uh, wood root access be in here. I guess root access would be in here. Um, and that would give you access to, like, literally everything. Um, what else? So the cameras, security, the alarm system. Uh, well, that one's going offline. I mean, if you get root access, you can get everything, or you can hack the modules individually. I'll do root access. Alrighty, root access <clears throat> is also a 1d12. Alright. I rolled an 11 that time. Hilarious. Oof. Literally <laughs> I don't know if I can... Yeah. That's, that's the good thing about D12 difficulty. Alright. 
Uh, so under the current uh, rules, that means yeah. you cannot break the firewall, and you trigger the alarm. Oh. Oh. Damn, and I rolled a 10 on it, too. Uh, well, he triggered the alarm, so yeah, that's... Not, not the building alarm, the, ne the network's alarms. Oh, okay, so we're not screwed yeah, yet. Always suddenly get, like, swatted. <laughs> in the, in the uh, I, I was really scared from what I was going to be like, Oh, fuck! <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so the alarm does begin to go off. Um, this means that, essentially, all the Matrix guards in the network are going to be bum rushing you Cairo. so i will give you one more chance to get into brute access before the brunt force of of this okay comes down on you i rolled well you go first you you go first all right i'll roll my 1d12 i rolled, ooh, I rolled a, that was almost another 10 but i rolled a nine instead <laughs> i also rolled a nine <laughs> oh god Sorry, I, can I defender. hold on. Can I can I, I, I at least disable the alarm off of that? Hmm. Give me, give me. Hmm. Luck what check. happened for like a five seconds? Yeah, you what are you rolling for? Okay, okay. okay. So it is, you know, match. I think this goes to the defender, but <laughs> that's a seven. A seven. All right. Yeah. So I will say that literally, like, as the this horde. Of like other hellhounds and centaurs and and uh, shadows and liches and demons and all this stuff are are rushing across the the, the network from the uh, back private rooms of the building. Um, uh, you just managed to like get one of your your matrixy arms through this glowing red wall, and you grab root access and you yank it through the the glowing red brick wall, and when that happens. All the Matrix guards like stop moving, and then like begin to walk back to their original positions, um, because you have gained access to the building. And that being said, you did still trigger the alarm. So even though you have root access, the security team will still know that somebody's hacked into the building. All right, that's fine. And I'm just gonna shut down, everything down. You would also know. You also tell that someone in the security office is trying to jack into the matrix can i prevent that you can yeah Ooh. um can you force them off yes yeah, you actually can, like prevent them from signing on like should I, he can cut the power to their computer cut the power to you know their their terminal i very much like to do that their account, you know, i would i account. would love to uh just shut down the security room access yeah, so you can just deactivate all the modules that have to do with the security office. The computers, the cameras, the alarms, all of it. That being said, those of you in the building, um, also outside the, the building, you wouldn't notice any difference. Oid will probably hear, like, uh, some, some extra commotion as uh, security is being put on high alert. Because somebody is hacking into the building. And their IT guy can't seem to get into the Matrix to, to fix the problem for some reason. How odd. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, and... All right. Uh, I'll come over to some vocals and be like, all right. Uh, all right. I'm just about ready to kick things off. Oh, okay then. Everybody on close standby? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I just need a minute. And, uh... While Cairo is doing Matrix things, um, I'm going to, you know, un or retrieve the USB from the terminal and try and set it back into place. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to, you know, exit out of the rent room and make my way over to the bar. But I'm not going to sit down. I'm just going to loiter around a little bit. Okay. Uh, so you begin to head back to the bar. Uh, as, uh, you know, Cairo has taken back control, taken over control, rather, of the building's network. Uh, and I think we can leave this session off there, on a cliffhanger. Next time, Maybe. your plan will be kicked into action, kicked into high gear, uh, with the building security team on high alert, but unable to actually set off the alarm. <laughs> That was stressful. That was very stressful. 
high stakes. Could have gone really bad. Of, uh, <laughs> cat and mouse here. Definitely might have had to do an emergency pull out. If it came down to it, yeah. If they had hacked in, I would have I would have had stuff to fend them off. No, like, that's not hacking in before you pulled the alarm. Oh no, yeah. Um, I have I have a skill named DDoS, which uh, impedes the user. I also have backfire, which I've had to use quite a few times <laughs> to a scary degree. Um, so yeah, that that was almost very close. Whew. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed the episode, let us know or don't. We don't know what you do in your private time. But other hopefully than not that, watch the other porn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, not, don't. Hopefully, don't watch not watch or react and react and react to the air porn. Yes, do not watch reactions of reactions of reactions of VR porn. But don't if you do, let us know. Don't be that kind of dissident. But if you do, let us know in the comments and we'll judge you for your decisions. <laughs> if, if, if you do that, leave a like. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the don't video, leave a like. If you like don't doing that, that leave a like. No, we'll know the difference. <laughs> but if you do, put it down in the comments and we'll judge you ourselves. And, uh... <laughs> Comment your favorite uh, reaction to a reaction to a reaction of VR porn. And uh, we'll judge you upon it. But other than that, we'll see you next time on Quest for the Core.